Time to break this one out again, I think. I've reached a new low. And unfortunately, it may not be the last time either. Antarctic sea ice has just reached another crazy low minimum extent, becoming the latest data point in a concerning trend. Scientists have called it a regime shift. So what does this mean for Antarctica and, more importantly, the rest of us? This is the third year in a row that Antarctic sea ice has dropped below 2 million square kilometres. For context, Antarctic sea ice grows and shrinks sixfold between summer and winter, doubling the size of the Antarctic continent at its maximum. And historically, the summer minimum sat at around 3 million square kilometres. But recently, things haven't been sticking to the norms. Here's a recap of what's happened over the last three years. Summer 2022 the first time that the area of floating sea ice around Antarctica dropped below 2 million square kilometres. Summer 2023, another record low, this time falling to 1.78 million square kilometres. Then came winter 2023, an astoundingly low maximum that blew all other years out of the water. In July, the area of sea ice that was missing was large enough to be the world's 10th largest country. Summer 2024, that's now, another near record low, this time the third lowest on the books. So what's going on? There are a few theories, but the trend in recent years is probably due to a combination of ocean heating with an additional contribution from the atmosphere. The Southern Ocean has warmed in recent decades due to climate heating, especially in the layers below the surface. This extra warmth means that the ocean can heat and melt sea ice from below and delay the freeze up in autumn and winter. Other ocean processes like convection can bring heat from depth up to the surface, adding to this effect. And there's also some suggestions that changing ocean salinity could have played a role. Then to add insult to injury, weather patterns and a warmer atmosphere can melt sea ice from the top down, push it towards the coast or cause it to break up. When there are loads of storms, the high winds associated with them can push sea ice around, break it apart, or prevent it from reforming. And certain types of weather pattern bring a lot of warmth with them, which can cause the sea ice to melt. And the more sea ice gets lost, the easier it is for the next year to record further record lows. That's because when there's less sea ice, the ocean absorbs a lot of heat, which then persists and makes it harder for sea ice to reform the following freeze-up period. Plus, with successive years of low sea ice, whatever does form the following season becomes a lot thinner, and thinner sea ice is easier to melt. That's exactly what we're seeing already in the rapidly changing Arctic. Some scientists have suggested that there has been a regime shift in Antarctic sea ice. Until 2015, Antarctic sea ice extent was actually slightly increasing, but after that point, it completely crashed, reaching record lows again and again. While sea ice can actually respond pretty quickly, meaning that it absolutely could recover if the right conditions returned, in the absence of meaningful climate action on this, it doesn't seem to be on the cards anytime soon. It seems likely that these kind of conditions will become the new norm as sea ice in the Southern Ocean starts to respond to human-driven climate heating. Less sea ice in Antarctica is bad news for all of us because the continent's great white mass acts as an enormous reflector, bouncing the sun's heat back to space and keeping the planet cool. With less sea ice, there's more heat in the system, driving further global warming. Every year that passes, it becomes more clear that the world needs to wake up to the extremes unfolding at the poles. Because what happens in Antarctica doesn't stay in Antarctica. Climate action can limit the damage we are doing to the polar regions. And if we can protect the poles, then we can protect ourselves. Just one thing before you go, making this kind of rapid response climate content is actually quite a lot of effort and I do that with the help of my awesome patrons. If you want to support the channel and see more of this kind of quick fire climate stuff then you can support them at this link over here. And if you want to catch up on the absolutely mind-blowing sea ice conditions of 2023 then check out this video down here. Okay, off you go now, bye!